so let me continue and uh, let's jump on semaphores. You can find uh, the semaphore objects. Uh, these uh, have uh, several different uh, flavors. What the semaphore is and how it works. Let's imagine you have got a parking lot. For example, Avis rental car. This parking lot has three spaces for car number one, car number two, and car number three. In the binary example, we have got a parking lot for just one car, but uh, when you come and uh, w you want to take the car from this parking lot, the parking lot is initially empty. So uh, if you want to uh, do something with the car, you have to wait until somebody puts the car in the parking lot and then you can take it. So the semaphore uh, effectively can uh, stop you from taking the car if the car is not on the place. The semaphores, when you define them, have an empty parking lot. So there is nothing. And to be able to uh, take the car from this parking lot, somebody else has to give you the semaphore, has to give you the car into the parking lot. So uh, the binary semaphore is a simple flip-flop telling you whether there is an item and uh, uh, you can take it if it is there, you can't, you are blocked if uh, the car is not in the parking lot. So you can see there exist uh, two different functions. One OS semaphore weight that uh, causes the appropriate task to wait until there is something in the parking lot. There is as well a, a function called OS semaphore release that gives the car back to the parking lot. So typically uh, you can use a binary semaphore in the way where you are waiting for some event, for something to happen and uh, when this happens, some other task gives you, releases the semaphore. So this way, uh, you are able to get synchronized when something else happens. This is as well a very useful thing when you operate with the interrupts. Our uh, TCP IP stack is based on this mechanism. And when you receive a packet, you get an interrupt and this interrupt gives the semaphore, so releases it. And the task waiting for the packet within the TCP IP uh, reception loop will take the semaphore and uh, it will process the data guarded by this mechanism. So OS semaphore release gives the car to the parking lot and allows other tasks to operate with that and OS semaphore wait, take the car from the parking lot and leave it empty. That's how the binary semaphore works. So this is the case of a binary semaphore with the semaphore present. If task two uh, waits for the semaphore, uh, ori originally there is uh, nothing, no car in the parking lot. So the task two is blocked, blocked, blocked. Task one then uh, uh, releases the semaphore, so it gives it to the parking lot and uh, task two, because it waits for it and uh, the semaphore gets uh, present, it uh, will take it away, process it, and in the next loop, it will again wait for the new semaphore. Technically, uh, this is implemented as a list of uh, one item length. We can create the semaphore with the OS semaphore create wait for it with a specified timeout and we can as well release the semaphore with the OS semaphore release. It's a very effective uh, synchronization mechanism. It can be used uh, among uh, different tasks, both on the side who releases the semaphore and on the side who waits for the semaphore, because then the tasks can compete for the semaphore. The counting semaphores are something that uh, gives you more possibilities. So 
if uh, I define a counting semaphore, I am defining how big the parking lot is. So I can, for example, define uh, three or five elements. And this is the maximum number of cars I have available. So with the counting semaphore, I can release as many as five cars and place them into the semaphore. And when I take the semaphore, I can take as many as they are available, but maximum five at a given time. This is one big advantage because, uh, again, in case of a web server, for example, where you have uh, a need for several different threads serving uh, different content in parallel, this helps you to distribute the load. Because uh, whenever you get an HTTP request, you put one semaphore in the queue. And uh, if uh, any handler task is available, it can take it. But uh, by number of elements that are available, maximum five, you can spawn maximum five tasks providing different data to you. So if you define a memory just for five tasks, the semaphore, counting semaphore, can limit how many of the threads will be available. So it can limit how much memory you spend on sending these uh, HTTP data. Another thing is, if you, for example, allocate uh, different URTs for communication or blocks of memory. So the counting semaphore can help you to limit the number of resources up to a given uh, uh, given amount and not more. You can define uh, the counting semaphore with a count value. And uh, again, you can uh, wait for the standard uh, semaphore with a timeout and uh, you can release the semaphore. And uh, in case there are spaces in the parking lots, the semaphore release will uh, return OK. But if uh, it doesn't fit inside, it will report an error because the parking lot is full. In this case, uh, I can use two different tasks uh, that release the semaphore. So both of them put uh, uh, their own cars in the parking lot and then the task three can consume them one by one. But uh, if uh, you would have more tasks, just two of them could uh, request any functionality at the same time from task three. The counting semaphores uh, are typically useful when you need to limit but still define how many elements in parallel can be taken, executed, provided.